today I'm doing something different. I am going to pair some food with wine, so watch until the very end because I'm inviting a couple friends and they're gonna do some wine tasting. And I'm making lasagna and key lime. I'm Yuna, welcome to your favorite recipe, so let's get started. Today, I'm making key lime pie. Yes, these are not key limes, not from the Key West. I've actually never been there. But they make just as authentic and traditional and delicious as a key lime pie would normally taste. Because I used to ship key lime pie from the Key West all the way to Chicago. So two cans of condensed milk. It's a lot, but it is sweet, and because it's so tart, you need two cans, trust me. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it into our bowl. This recipe is from Once Upon a Chef by Jen Siegel. Se Siegel, I think I said it right. All her recipes have been tested and perfected, and I believe that, because I have been making this for like, it doesn't matter what the season is. I make it in December, January, like once a month, I feel like. It's that good. All right, so two cans. Make sure I'm not wasting any of that because that's where the goodness is. Um, second can. Oh, here comes the second can. The recipe also calls for one cup of yogurt and two containers of chobani, just a yogurt part, is about a cup. You can see it here. So about a cup goes in. And depending on how citrusy you want this to be, you can add up to like eight limes and I have seven of them here to work with. Um, one thing that I like to do is I always zest my lime before squeezing it because after you cut in half and then squeeze it and then try to get the zest, it's much harder, so. And no, you're not gonna get um, zest from all seven limes. You're only gonna do this with only a couple limes. I also love this recipe, by the way, because as you can see, I don't need a hand mixer um, or stand mixer. Yes, you can use it, so this is like pretty much pretty hassle-free. So once I get all my lime in there, now the fun part. Squeezing in all my baby lime. As I go, I do need to taste like how acidic it is because some lime aren't as like tart or bitter. Make sure you're not just cutting all eight of them and let them just sit there. On this, you can work things pretty quickly. Oh, and be careful, because like, I got lime splash in my eye one time. It's a lot of juice, you can tell, right? Like, it's starting to swim in there. There's a chance I might not even need to use all eight of them, because her recipe, let me just see it. Just from her photo, she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. I don't know if this is for a photo or if this is for just she actually used that many. You're gonna start to see condensed milk and my cup of yogurt start to just emulsify here and really get thickened. You see it? Oh my gosh, it tastes like heaven, you guys. And you see the little chunks of lime in there. It's so pretty. You know what? Since I got this nice, beautiful color going, I'm gonna zest one more. Cause why not? I have the lime to work with. And one lime isn't much, so just an additional color. We're done. You're like, what? I know, no flour, no egg, just a little bit of condensed milk. You're looking for this consistency. It's not too runny, but runny enough. So her recipe calls for, like, from scratch. Um, the pie crust needs to be made from scratch. If 
you eat this every day, you're gonna end up looking like key lime pie. Just kidding. I already preheated the oven to 375, and I'm just going to put this in the middle rack right here. There you go, 15 minutes. And that should give you enough time to clean up your mess and come back. See you in a little bit. Okay, it looks so good. And if I move it, it has a little bit of jiggle. And as it cools off, it will stop. So it'll start to solidify. And good thing about Chicago weather, it's March or, or no, it's still February. Um, it's still kind of cold. I mean, it's a lot warmer. When it gets in the when it gets to the 40s, we're like throwing our winter clothes off and putting shorts and a short sleeve shirt. So what I'm gonna do is actually to um, expedite cooling. I'm gonna take it outside. Oh no, I don't think so. No, no, no. It's cold enough, but it's raining. Okay, backup plan. Because it's raining, of course, I'm gonna just have to put that in the fridge. Don't judge. It's not my donuts. Somebody left donuts in here. Yay, perfect. Just like that. So I went ahead and baked the key lime pie as our dessert because it needs to cool off. I think we have just enough time to make lasagna. This lasagna recipe I'm really excited to make. It is from Binging with Babish, and his recipe is inspired by The Sopranos. So in his recipe video, he makes three different kinds of Italian, basically cuisine. He makes the lasagna, baked ziti, and then I think rigatoni at the end. I'm making one lasagna, because I really want to be able to be successful at this. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, of course, prepare our vegetables. Before I start crying from the onions, I'm gonna go ahead and start sauteing. Um, I got my non-stick pan over medium-high heat and drizzle a couple tablespoons of olive oil here. Here comes the onion. Fantastic. Smells so good. As soon as onions just start frying. And then right in here, I'm gonna go ahead and add our garlic. Six cloves. Garlic has a lower heat point than onions, so um, this makes sure that garlic doesn't burn when onions still have to take some time to cook. So that's, that's my tip. Okay, so now we are sauteing our vegetables. And in his video, he also puts these vegetables aside. So I'm gonna do that. And before I do that, let's season, huh? Some pepper. And of course, some salt. Our water's boiling nicely too. I'm glad I went ahead and prepared that. Oh. All right, so you're looking for this color here. The onions are pretty translucent and garlic is starting to brown too. Now, don't cook it all the way because we're gonna add this back in. Now put this in right here, same pan. Let's go ahead and add our meat. So I've got half pound of everything, ground beef as well as ground sausage. It does not look like half pound here, but it's all like, it's in chunks, that's why it looks like that. So start to break apart pretty quickly. That's about two tablespoons of Italian seasoning. And now while that's working, our meat's still slightly pink, and that is time to add in our garlic and onion back in. So he doesn't specify how much basil he uses, but we all appreciate some extra flavoring. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a generous amount. This 
next it's time to add in our tomato paste. So the recipe calls for one to two tablespoons. I make sure, making sure I didn't splash everywhere. Next thing, we're gonna add in our crushed tomato. Yeah, so our sauce is still cooking and I'm gonna not bother for some time, about 30 minutes or so. Oh my gosh, you guys, I almost forgot to add. So this is my add-on. Um, I love working with sun-dried pesto, especially when it's a good brand. You don't need a lot, about a tablespoon. Sun-dried tomato pesto, I've been using it for so long and like I get confused. Um, it's going to enhance the flavor. So we're gonna chop our parsley. So parsley set aside. Let me make some room. Ricotta cheese. Great. This isn't the exact recipe, obviously, because he's not using parsley, um, but I like using it for color and for extra flavor. Like, the more flavor you can give me, the better. That's how I look at it. I'm still waiting for my water to boil. The water level needed to be high enough for my lasagna noodles to be completely fitting. So what I'm gonna do is just take advantage of this time to um, shred some cheese. First thing, Parmesan Reggiano. I always like to use my cheese grater and just like slightly lean over. So the last part, I'm not gonna grate my thumb or anything. I just put some chunks in the sauce. I think that's the only part that it needs grating, believe it or not. So in his recipe video, he also lays down um, basil like flat and then he addressed the problem with like how, how are you gonna cut this? And I agree with him 100%. So what I'm gonna do is uh, reduce my pain of doing that and just prepare fresh, freshly chopped basil that'll go on as a layer. Oh my God. Did you cut it? Yeah. I haven't cut my finger in years, so consider myself lucky. Now I'm gonna add my noodles and make sure that, perfect. I freaked out for a bit, obviously. And look at that. I might have to do that, you guys. Ah! That's fine. So we're gonna let that boil for eight minutes. Oh, yes. Of course, some blocks of cheese. Literally blocks of cheese, thinly sliced. As soon as the noodles are done, the time, timer goes off, I'm going to put the noodles in the ice cold water. I put a block of ice in here, it's super cold. Um, and then we can start building our lasagna. So layer the sauce, generous amount. My gosh, this looks so good. So good, you guys. So now that's done. Time to rescue all my noodles out, straight into the cold water. Ah! Okay, so and then our last noodle goes right in the cold water, making sure I'm not missing anything. There is that little bit. Perfect. And we're gonna, we're not gonna be here that long. And right now, just enough. Make sure it's not too watery. Just gonna go ahead and lay it this way. Perfect. So some noodles didn't get done entirely. So about four should 
fit perfectly. And then we're going to layer my ricotta cheese. Just put a chunk on there and spread it thinly. It's all about proportions, you guys. Now, I'm going to put extra basil leaves all across. It's chopped, so it's easy to cut. Nothing's gonna bother. This is the longest part, really, like layering this in here. I've been wanting to do this for so many weeks and I'm so happy this is finally happening. Yes, they're here, we're almost done. We got two layers, right? And then I'm gonna use my shredded mozzarella right here. I might use a whole pound of mozzarella, you guys, because it is a big pan right here. And just for fun of it, and since I already put some work into this, I'm just gonna cover the edge just like this corner. Oh, can't forget this. Lastly, Parmesan. Perfect. And then, I'll see you in just a little bit. Woo, it's heavy. Oh my gosh. Of course, middle rack. Oh my gosh, so the lasagna. I feel like I'm still hearing it boil. Do you ever do that? Just like lean into your food and listen? Just like listen to its music, right? So I can see the results is exactly what I imagined. And the noodles, you can see at the edge, it's crispy. You know what, this is the time for me to do this. Before my friends get here, I have to test to see if it's fully cooked. And it's al dente, you guys, it's so good. Oh my God, sauce, I had a little bit of that. Super good, and oh my God. Hi, guys. Hi, Yuna. Yuna. Always eating, right? What's going on? <laughs> so good to see you. Good to see you. you. Perfect timing. Yes. That looks amazing. Oh, it smells delicious. Oh, oh my God, God I'm, I'm so, so excited. Oh, so man. Absolutely. And you know we wouldn't come without some wine pairings. Of course, of course. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we heard about what you were doing, and so with lasagna, we, we picked uh, some wines we thought might you know, might pair nicely. There's a Barbera from okay. Cascina della Rose, one of our favorite uh, imports from the Longue, from the Alba region in, in northern Italy. And then wow. um, further north, towards the mountains, this is a rosé of Nebbiolo, also from Piemonte, uh, but, but Alta Piemonte, a little bit uh, uh, further north. And so this has that really cool combination of it's salty, but it also has like, you know, that really nice strawberry and, 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 and bright fruit elements of Nebbiolo. And then um, this is just gonna be like a big warm hug. So you picked these two because completely different style yeah. to pair with lasagna and why is that? Well, you know, there's, there's no rules in wine pairing. First of all, I think some people get caught up with the conventions of having, you know, red wine with, with, with beef and then having white wine with fish. That's, that's great, we can talk about that, but I really think it's like you should experiment the same way when you cook. You're experimenting with different spices, different temperatures. Oh. Um, so these are, these are low intervention producers that put most of their effort into growing, you know, organic wine in the vineyard. And so when they make it in the winery, they don't, they don't mess with it too much. So, yeah. so it, it's more like cooking and, and less like baking when it comes to wine. Tomatoes are kind of tricky to pair with and I knew that you were making a tomato-based lasagna and so, because tomatoes are so high in acidity, it yeah. can make wines sometimes come out flabby. So you oh. want to actually choose a high acid grape and Barbera as a red grape is very high acid. So it goes really well with baked 
tomatoes. Okay. And then rosé. I just thought the rosé would kind of be just something fun to try out. Also, Alto Piemonte, where this is rose from. Rosé all day. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The soil is very high acid, so the wines tend to be more um, Oh, interesting. Acid. So I'm, I'm curious. We wanted to bring two because we were curious to see how each yeah. paired. Yeah. Yeah. Discuss more. And this I'm is so an excited. experiment for us as well, so this will yeah. be a good exercise. But totally. rose, especially the European profile of rose, uh, it, it's almost a combination of the things that we like about white wine and also red wine, and it's something with a chill. It's um, oh, very easy to drink, very, very uh, uh, food friendly. I'm really excited. Well, we're gonna definitely delve into them, and don't eat too much because I got a dessert too. All right. And then the cool thing about rosé is that you know you can pair it with virtually anything across the wow. meal, but you also can greet guests with it. It can be a nice aperitif. It can be uh, something that you can drink year-round. And certainly, when things warm up, rosé is is welcome. But this is a more structured, heartier rosé. So this is something you can drink year-round, and you can drink it a couple years past the wow. release. Uh, it's only going to get better. I'm so excited, you guys. So every time I cut my lasagna, I'm like. Hmm, how many, how many columns, how many rows? It's like the age and brain in me. Like, let me methodically and do this. Okay, how does that look? It looks good, right? Good, you guys skip breakfast? We did. We did, yeah, you fed us really well last night. So <laughs> it was enough to get us through to this point where you're gonna feed us again. That's, that's Johnny's diet. That is Johnny's diet. And of course, there, there were plenty of desserts. Yes, oh my God, it's perfect, you guys. I'm so excited. So of course, we eat with our eyes, so I'm just gonna top my lasagna off with some parsley. While they're preparing our wine to go well with this, I really hope that you make this, because it was pretty simple. And invite some friends that know a lot about wine, because it'll be, Double fun. They know how to open wine. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Hello. It's amazing. You know, that looks amazing. Cheers. Cheers, you know. Cheers. Cheers. Thank, you. Thank you guys. So tell me, how do I just smell first and then do this, right? Well, one of the things that Andy really gets upset about whenever he watches a film is no one knows how to hold a wine glass. Yeah. Oh yeah, tell me please. In almost every movie, all actors hold it like this. This is incorrect. You need to be holding it on the stem. And the reason for that is if you hold it here, your hand will get warm up the oh. wine. Yeah. And you don't want that. And also like fingerprints and you know, so it's just the stem is there just so you can get your swirl on. But all this is, I mean, I, I do it just out of reflex. So I swirl my coffee at this point, but it really is just to get some air in there. So when you do put your nose in there, it's going to lift up the aromatics of the wine and you can smell a little bit more of the Wow. Fruit. So it does make a difference and it looks cool. It does look cool. We'll just like constantly spin you guys. So this is a wine from our dear friend, Luca DeMarchi. He's in the town of La Sona in Northern Piemonte. And this is a rosé of Nebbiolo, so the, the unique soils that are make the wines be more on the salty side. But it's just you get that pure Nebbiolo, and, and when it's done in a rosé, it almost has like wild strawberries. And a little bit of herbs, so I think with a basil, yeah. it'll really pop. Let's get a photo real quick for my thumbnail. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Do we get to actually like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think like... I think the wine has that really cool salty element. So That's so good. I think with this pasta wow. and the sauce, I mean, the general rules of wine pairing was that, you know, you, 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 want, the, you, you want the wine to be, um, for, at least for desserts, you want it to be sweeter than the, the, than the, the food. And I think in, in situations with, um, with sauce and what Tori said about tomatoes, you definitely want to have like a higher acidity. So I think with this, with, yeah, it. I'm excited. I've not had it yet. I'm digging in right now, you guys. Because the meat in the pasta is like a base, and then this kind of just like lifts oh, the dish mia. a little bit. That wow. makes sense. Like the acid. So with tomatoes, if you have a low acid wine, it can almost make it all taste like flabby. Not the dish, but like the wine will taste flabby, and it just won't. 
be appetizing. You won't really want mm. to drink the wine. You need more. Um, well, let's try the Barbera. No, I want to. This is really working. <laughs> this is really this working. This is really good. This might be the match. Let's finish the bottle first. I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, one more taste and then we'll do the Barbera. But this yeah. is working really okay. well. It, it's really good, right? Mmm. Like lifts with the meat. I didn't realize you were adding meat. Uh, meat lasagna. Really I love surprise. my meat so much. It's more important, I think, to pair the wine with the sauce necessarily than with the meat. And so, since oh. the sauce has, you know, it has the garlic elements and it, you know, it has the the, the rich tomato kind of like that Plus that cheap. baked tomato. It it really lifts it. And then the. The beef is going to go with the, the bitterness or the tannin of the wine or, 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 or the protein of the cheese. And so mm. this is a fairly tannic wine, even though it's fruity. And it's working with all of those components really well. Because it's tomatoes, or tomatoes technically considered fruit, right, you said? Yes. Gotcha. Um, yeah, this has both Italian sausage, pork, and beef. And I was wondering about, because I got three types of different cheeses in there. Mozzarella, Parmigiano Reggiano ricotta cheese, yeah, I think that's it. I think yeah. with Parmesan, it has that umami, sort of that, mm -hmm. that fifth or sixth taste, I can never remember which one, but it lifts it and exaggerates it. I mean, it's just wonderful accent. Wow, this wine makes me probably have more lasagna, right? Mm. Um, I like that you added more than one cheese because a ricotta only lasagna is not my favorite. Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> yeah, the three cheeses were working. The ricotta is so hard to get right. I think you nailed it. Well, I think the rosé is turned out to be a great pairing. I'm excited to try the Barbera. I know. I'm excited. Well, save some food because we're going to finish our tasting and then we're going to move on to the next one. Wow. Man, this is a home run. Me. Good job, Tori. Thank you. Great job. I did my homework. Did you really? Okay, so we're gonna pour in the sink. This is our uh, our dump bucket, and uh, oh, I just finished mine. Or or drink it. It is it is Sunday, so we can definitely get our drink on. Hit <laughs> that yeah, totally. Um, here, let me pour this for you. Thank so you. so the grape variety is Barbera. It's one of the important and local grapes of Piedmont, which is in northwest Italy. So you fly into Milan, essentially, it's about an hour and I would say like an hour and a half to get towards Torino, but in that region was Piedmont, which is one of Italy's most important uh, wine producing regions. So Nebbiolo essentially is that dominant grape making some of the more structured and, and famous wines. And Barbera is more of, I would say, I mean, it's a wine for the people. It's l certainly less expensive. It's more approachable. You can drink it younger. You don't have to cellar it a long time. It's ready to go right off the cork. And it just combines acidity, which will go nicely with the dish, but a lot of like delicious ripeness and balanced ripeness. And so this is like giving you the hug. So, you know, we got a little bit of the wake up slap from the rosé. It's like acidity. And this is more of like, you know, the, the, the warm, comforting hug that I think also goes with this comfort food. There's also a little bit of wood on this. Yeah. Oh. So they're aging it. Um, uh, so they, they ferment it in stainless steel tanks. And then when they want to age it, um, they'll do a little bit of in some barrels. And so that time in barrel is gonna provide oxygen to the wine. It's gonna soften it with the tannins, you know, that bitterness that we talked about, and just really make it a, a longer, more complex yeah. wine. I keep doing that. Cheers. Probably like cheers. bothering you. That's no, no. perfect. Is this COVID way of cheersing them? <laughs> and we do that. Do oh, oh, we know that. That's, that's, and you can't, um, you can't cross the streams, Italian style. Oh gosh. So, and you also obviously need to make that eye contact. Nice. Otherwise, there'll be a curse. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that from the <laughs> Italians? Okay. Yeah, and then if that ever happens, you have to like take off the curse. Um, you can do it. There, yeah. Sorry, there are two ways to go about seeing if a wine tastes well with food. You either taste it and then have a bite, or you have a bite and then you taste the wine. Let's and see. both ways, actually, sometimes it totally tastes different um, if you do that and you're like, wow, I really actually like it when I have the wine after the bite. So when you're in a restaurant, like a, a tasty menu restaurant, sometimes they will tell you, we recommend taking a bite and then having a glass which is so interesting because they've literally done that exercise and they're like, we don't want people drinking this before they before have any the meal. food in their mouth. 
So with this, kind of cool. I'm trying both. I just had a bite and then I had a... It's like while the food's still kind of in your mouth and you have a drink. This is getting me, this is, um, it's picking up on a lot of the delicious, the meat, kind of the, 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 the braised and, 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 and broken down meat, you know, that, the, the fat of the meat, the texture, it's really coming out with, with the more dry or tannic wine. They're, they're very different, they're complementary, but this is more like, more base tones and more soulful in the pairing. This is so good. This would be typical. A lot of people would think Barbera lasagna. This oh, really? Is like kind of yeah. outside the norm, kind of a fun, um, adventurous. I think I prefer the rosé. I don't know why. I Maybe it's because it's Sunday. I prefer the rosé just for drinkability, but also versatility. Um, this is uh, a wine that you know you would serve this lasagna at a family meal, and this is going to make everybody happy. Um, certainly, all the way up to you know mom and dad and possibly oh, yeah. grandpa. Yeah, because it's like this is that classical red wine vibe, and definitely like you know this this is something that you could drink beyond the meal. So after this, into the cheese course or around the fire, it's still oh. going to be going strong. And I think the elements of the rosé, food friendly, but this is more of like energy, the start of the of the party. And so these are transitional, they work very well. I think food pairing rosé for sure, but I think this wine is showing me uh, the delicious meat that you selected for the lasagna. So if this is like more vegetarian or a different style, I probably wouldn't recommend that, but I, I think that would go with both. It's That's also adding a little bit of spice to that finish. Let's see. Mm -hmm. I know what you mean. Huh. Yeah. I like them both, but yeah, totally different vibe. Now, can you drink like a glass of that and then switch back to rosé yeah. with there the same no meat? Rules. There's no rules. There are no rules. No, yeah, the same way with cooking. It'll get you the same result and, and after I, two bottles, right? I will say that the, the, the pasta in this, the al dente, you cook the pasta perfectly. It's, so, it's the right amount of resistance, great texture. I've been learning and I was cooking this recipe from, I don't know if you've seen, Binging with Babish. No. He does like a voiceover while he cooks. And I was calling it banging with Babish before. I had total dyslexia. Anyway, um, he cooks his pasta for four minutes and like cook them in the oven for an hour, over an hour. But I knew that I wanted to cook this a little quickly. So I cooked the pasta for eight minutes uh -huh. and then put it in the oven for 15 minutes so that it would come out like perfectly. So. Because I think I've had too many, I think all of us have too many overcooked lasagna, it's right? It's the worst. And it you is. can't reverse that. I mean, you can no. always go al dente into more cooking, especially right. if you reheat it, right. but you can't reverse it. Yeah, this is probably one of the best lasagnas I've ever had. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's so good. Well, thank you for the recipe. I must say that. Well, are we ready for some dessert, you guys? What do you think? So. I think I'm gonna go for a run really quick and then come back and then we can have the dessert. <laughs> the Sunday afternoon nap time is like approaching us slightly, <laughs> pretty fast here. Yeah, okay, let me, all right, we'll be back mm. with the dessert right now. So my pie has cooked perfectly and it's cooled off in the fridge for over an hour which is perfect. And now, just for coloring and for extra flavor. Smell. I know, you can just smell it. It's like preparing you for desserts. I'm already, my problem with cooking videos right now is like, when I start to smell the food, I like start to salivate and I can't talk. Like, like I'm drinking water. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's so unclean. Like I that's have to nice swallow touch. my spit, right? Okay, so that's that key nice, lime pie. I... Tell me about the bottle of wine, please. The best part about screw caps is it's very easy to open. Oh, love it! When yeah. I was thinking about key lime pie, I was thinking, you know, you can when you pair with desserts, you can either do a few things. You can do sweet with sweet or. Um, you try to contrast it, maybe you do something a little bit more tannic or, you know, just fruit profile to try to uh, create a contrast. But I was really thinking that sweet with sweet would work. So Moscato d'Asti is a oh. uh, slightly sparkling sweeter wine, also from the Piedmont area. So we've been sticking with Piedmont this whole time through this meal. And it's just a really light, um, 
slightly sweet, refreshing, bubbly drink. And I just thought it would go perfect with like the delicacy of key lime pie because um, key lime pie is just like so melt in your mouth. We didn't want to overpower. We wanted something that would just uh, wow. gently add, almost like adding a little bit of salt to a dish instead of overpowering or becoming its own thing, if that makes sense. Totally. And I think like also when I saw the, the you zesting the pie, it's just that the, that release of aromatics that the lime mm -hmm. gave. It's going to be the same thing when we taste the wine. Is the, it, 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 Moscato is very aromatic, very pretty, oh my God. floral. Yeah, the moscato is very topical, flowery, very perfumed, you know. Is it? But then the palette is just like here we really go. delicate and really light, and the bubble is a very, very light bubble. Um, so not anything like a champagne where it can be like intense and attacking you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, you know. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, I smell great. Of course. Have you what ever had the... this wine before? No. I have a feeling you You're might like it. You're gonna be obsessed. This <laughs> is a dessert. Why do I? Why do I even need a dessert? Right? It, like, they're, Tori, this is brother you're like ruining my dessert. I'm, no, I'm kidding. This it's is, so good. Yeah, this is a match made in heaven. Wow. Wow. That is so good. I don't know if I, I think I'm gonna skip the pie. I'm like. Don't skip this pie. It's like, is insane. Oh my god. What do you think? Bearing. Incredible. How is it? I have to taste oh this. Oh my god, your pie is incredible. Oh man, is the it? lime and the it's bringing out so much in the wine. Let me taste. The this. wine is like Let's obviously really delicious and juicy and like sexy, but it, the the pairing is oh, incredible. Oh wow. Yeah. I'm eating with my knife. Yes. The wine tastes like wine a little bit. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> this is very complimentary. But in like a good way. You're not getting any harsh acid. It's just like a delicate, soft, supple. It's not too citrusy. Mouthful. And I'm getting like almost a coconut finish. Yes. Yes. So I'll tell you what. Is you're there sensitive. Is there a coconut in here? Yeah. Nice. Coconut yogurt. <laughs> That is incredible. Oh my God. Mm, yum. <laughs> oh my God. This oh man. Dangerous. Time for a nap, you guys. No, I need to hire you to cook. Wow. <laughs> Please we, hire we me. We should team up. We'll bring the wine. Yeah. The Cooking. What's next? Hire me, you guys. <laughs> What's next? When, when are we getting together again? So guys, this is so fun. And I wanted to make a video to show you that you can do this. It's like such an easy recipe. You saw it, they didn't see it, but you saw it. It was so easy, right? So make this, and if we're not connected yet on Instagram, find me. I'm at Yuna Cooks. Find me, Y-U-N-A, like my name, Cooks, because I'm always cooking. So make this, and then we're gonna raise our glasses and do another cheers. Yes, perfect.